Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article is about blasts in Beirut. More than 100 people were killed and nearly 4,000 people were injured because of a massive explosion that took place in Lebanon's capital and that is at Beirut. What is the cause of this blast? The initial assessment says this is because of detonation of more than 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate. This is just the initial assessment but clear-cut analysis for the same is yet to be released by the government. First up, what we have to focus is on this chemical ammonium nitrate. What is this ammonium nitrate? This is nothing but an odorless crystalline substance which is used in bomb making as well as in fertilizer. How is it used in bomb making? It is main component when it comes to number of applications like the mining explosives where it is mixed with the fuel and then it is detonated with an explosive charge. The more the ammonium nitrate, the bigger is the explosive capacity. And at the same time, it is also used in agricultural field as well. It is used as a fertilizer. How fertilizer? Ammonium nitrate is frequently added to increase a fertilizer's nitrogen content. It is basically in the form of granule. As you see in this picture, it is mostly in the form of granules when it comes to the fertilizer. So the minute it is added to the fertilizer and when the fertilizer is added to the soil, the nitrogen content of this particular soil immediately starts increasing increasing. That is how ammonium nitrate is used as a fertilizer when it comes to agriculture under normal conditions and without much heat and without the friction of heat, this ammonium nitrate does not get ignited. Whether it is in the form of bomb making or it is used as a fertilizer, one precaution that we have to make sure is that it is kept in a very controlled environment. In case there is any heat that is provided to the ammonium nitrate, this could result in explosion. Therefore, storage must follow all the strict guidelines to isolate ammonium nitrate from any kind of of inflammable liquids. The inflammable liquids can be petroleum, it can be oil or any type of other oils which can ignite the spark in the ammonium nitrate. In the present scenario, because there was lack of safety norms that were being followed when it was stored in the port city of Biret, that is why there has been a massive explosion in the capital of Lebanon, says the initial assessment. Apart from this, we also have to focus on the political turmoil in the country of Lebanon. Currently, there there is a lot of unemployment. People are not able to find jobs. The government is not working effectively. They are not able to provide basic amenities to the people. This has resulted in increased corruption. So because there is increased corruption and the government and the political forces are not able to provide the basic amenities, this has resulted in poor governance. So the people are going against the political class and the political class is facing the political turmoil as well. Adding to the ooze of the political turmoil is the unemployment crisis and at the same time economic crisis that is unfolding in the region of Lebanon. When you look at the current economic scenario, there is currency crisis that is present in this region and at the same time this has also caused large scale closure of businesses which has also resulted in increased inflation and soaring prices as well. They have also defaulted on the sovereign debt in 2019 which is also increasing the flood of the economic crisis. Adding to the ooze of this is the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has made sure that the entire world is bleeding and Lebanon is no exception to this. They are already facing the health crisis in the form of COVID-19 and what this blast has added is increasing casualties where the health sector will also have to look at COVID-19 and at the same time more than 4,000 people who were the major casualties because of this experience. Explosive. On the border front, it also has issues with Israel and is also fighting another organization, Hezbollah. So the government is already infused with multiple issues right now. So coping with this particular blast would be an uphill task for the country's government. So what it requires is multi-country cooperation as well as the global bodies coming together. The World Bank, after this blast took place and when it saw number of people suffering, has partnered with this country to mobilize public and private 
private financing for the reconstruction and recovery. The United Nations is also working closely with the authorities in Lebanon to support the ongoing response after the massive explosion. The World Health Organization has also promised Lebanon that it is ready to provide any type of assistance amidst the COVID-19 crisis and after this blast has taken place. So going forward, the immediate focus would be to make sure that the city stands up on its feet. So this will require multi-country cooperation in the immediate neighborhood and the global organization's support as well in order to overcome this glitch in their Lebanon's country. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article here is speaking about nuclear deterrent. Science and technology is a boon to the human beings. The human intelligence can be used to create wonders, disrupt lives in a mega scale and also bring immense change globally. The same science and technology can also be used to destroy the lives as well. The tool of advancement may also push us back to the stone age with the development of what is called as weapons of mass destruction. So one such example is the nuclear missiles developed by number of countries with the application and development of science and technology. What is the present context? 2020 marks the 75 years since two atomic bombs were dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan by United States of America. This happens to be the only nuclear attack since its development. The strike and ambush led to the death of many innocent souls who had nothing to do with this war. Many civilians passed away and many survived to live in precarious and an uncertain life filled with grief. The ones who survived were also called as Hibakusha. What has been the impact because of this atomic bomb strike? 1. It has led to death of the people. 2. There is radiation poisoning and as a result of radiation poisoning, number of health impacts have surfaced. People are suffering from lung cancer, heart diseases and also lung problems as well. This has also led to hair loss, bleeding in the gums, fever and other fatalities. And 3. Because of this impact, it has also resulted in environmental degradation as well. Why did United States of America bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki? After the World War II, we had number of countries which had surrendered to United States of America and to United Kingdom. But colonial powers were also planning to increase their footprint as well. One such example is with Japan. Japan did not want to surrender but it also wanted to capture some of the Southeast Asian countries. Why? Because they were rich with oil. So because they were rich with oil, they wanted to capture Southeast Asia. The United States of America wanted to teach Japan a lesson so that it stops all its military actions after the World War II. That is the primary reason United States of America bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki which happened to be places in Japan. Why Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan is another question. When you look at countries like Japan, they have some of the cultural significant places and these include places like Kyoto. They do not want to disturb this cultural significant area but another important factor with respect to Hiroshima is that this was a place where military production was taking place for Japan and at the same time it was also the headquarters of the second army and of the Chugoku regional army. So in case this region is dismantled, in case it is neutralized, it means that Japan would not be able to fight or take any of the measures with respect to military action. As a result, United States of America picked up Hiroshima and Nagasaki and launched this heinous act against the humanity by dropping the nuclear missiles. In this particular backdrop, we have to focus on nuclear deterrence, how countries have been increasing their nuclear stockpiles and how it could harm the human beings as well as the environment. When we compare the yield as well as the capacity of the year 1945 to the year 2020, what we actually witness is the yield capacity of the nuclear missile and at the same time the capacity to inflict massive damage by the nuclear missiles have considerably increased from the year 1945 up to the year 2020. So what it means is that these nuclear missiles would be able to inflict massive damage and their power has increased manifold as well. The damage could also be brutal as well as barbaric. The number of missiles 
result countries have have also been increasing as well one such example is that countries today have nearly about 126000 nuclear missiles this is just an approximate number it will be more than this and the major stakeholders is united states of america as well as russia then there are other powers like china uk and we have pakistan india which also have many nuclear missiles as well and at the same time as many as 2000 nuclear tests are also conducted under the ground and above the ground as well this is to demonstrate the explosive power this leads to another question how vulnerable are we in the era of nuclear deterrence the missiles of late are built in such a way that they are guided loaded agile swift and hit any target in and around the world once it is launched it becomes very tough to control them examples of controlling them are very limited or in fact least to none about its interception we might say that we might have nuclear shelters we might say that we might also have ballistic missile interceptors as well has it been tested how many have been tested these are some of the questions which haunt us which say that nuclear deterrence as a whole does not work so in this particular backdrop we are focusing on two important parameters does nuclear deterrence work we will look at all the arguments in reference to this and we will also look at that nuclear deterrence as a whole does not come once it is applied and once it is launched when you consider countries like united states of america or the countries like the erstwhile soviet union they were in a cold war era they were in a battle of ideology as well in this particular era they almost run into a scenario that this could have resulted in a third world war but because they had major stakes and they also realized that this could be a retaliation where large number of people would lose their lives they did not engage in any kind of nuclear catastrophe so what stopped united states of america and soviet union was that this could have resulted in loss of lives of millions of people so because they did not conduct such an activity this is acting as a major deterrent why deterrent in case one country launches it the other country immediately launches another nuclear program and as a result what we will see is mutual annihilation of the entire country this will result in loss of people it will result in loss of environment and innocent souls and innocent people will ultimately be killed because of an action of a political master so this means that nuclear deterrence is working out because the political masters will not take such heinous steps why because for them their people is important so it is acting as a nuclear deterrent this leads to a question of what is nuclear deterrence let's say there is a country which has large scale nuclear missiles there is another country which might have the nuclear missiles or it might not have the nuclear missiles as well so the country which is wanting to invade another country or create certain instability in the country will not launch a nuclear missile or will not invade because this country the home country will have what is called as the nuclear missiles so the nuclear missiles is preventing another country either to conduct a nuclear activity or invade another country and that is what is called as nuclear deterrence so a nuclear deterrence is one where the other country stops itself from conducting a nuclear missile test on another country or invading another country in a surety that the other country might launch back the nuclear missiles this is what is nuclear deterrence now we will look at arguments as to how nuclear deterrence is a myth and does not work in reality the cuban missile crisis that happened in the year 1962 is one such example there was heat of cold war between united states of america and soviet union and this could have almost resulted in a nuclear war this means that even in spite of deterrence it does not work that when there is increased heat exchange happening between the political leaders of two different countries it can result in what is called as ineffectiveness of the nuclear deterrence that is when emotions run high it gets out of control and this can ultimately harm a country resulting in what is called as nuclear launch pads and at the same time you have number of countries let's take for example north korea north korea is one country which is also fickle minded you have leaders who all always threaten of a nuclear attack as well and in such a scenario how could there be 
optimal rationality optimal rationality is when decision makers are able to make decisions on a rational basis and in this particular scenario taking the example of north korea how can there be optimal rationality then you have other countries like pakistan which also has threatened india in the past of nuclear action as well in case there are any non state actors and if these nuclear weapons falls into the non state actors like the terrorist organizations what could be the flight of this nuclear deterrent so ultimately it means if you are considering states like north korea or pakistan where one country has a fickle minded leader the other country has non state actors in case it does fall into the wrong hands then deterrent as a whole does not work is another set of argument as well so what we have to understand is that nuclear deterrent has worked for the past 75 years. this according to the author is nothing but luck but in the present scenario or in the near future in case this luck factor misses what we will have is the devastation of the humanity is what this article all about now let's look into the next article this article here is speaking about new map issued by pakistan Pakistan Prime Minister recently has unveiled a new political map that includes the entire state of Jammu and Kashmir it also includes Sir Creek which happens to be a dispute between India and Pakistan and in what could be a bizarre act it has also included Junagadh also into the map of Pakistan this is not the very first time that Pakistan has tried to portray Junagadh as part of its territory back in the year 2012 as a part of atlas of islamic republic of pakistan had also portrayed junagadh as a territory of pakistan the pakistan cabinet has also approved the decision to rename a major road in islamabad as srinagar highway and this road was previously called as kashmir highway kindly remember this map that we have used is only for the representational purposes but the entire jammu and kashmir is an integral part of india and will always remain a part of india why did pakistan take up such a decision of changing or coming up with a new political map that decision was basically to appease certain domestical political sentiments and what we also have is that india had taken a decision to downgrade the state of jammu and kashmir into union territory territories of jammu and kashmir and ladakh and pakistan did try on all the international platforms to bring kashmir issue on a global scale it became completely unsuccessful the global community supported the cause of india china did try its hands as well it again became unsuccessful so because pakistan and china did try it it did not work out and that is another reason why pakistan has come up with this move of unveiling a new map in the form of political map including the parts of jammu and kashmir but what we have to realize is that jammu and kashmir is an integral part of india what has been the violations when it comes to the present scenario we have what is called as the shimla agreement of the 1972 and we also have lahore declaration of the year 1999 with this act of pakistan it means pakistan has violated the shimla agreement of 1972 and the lahore declaration of where both the countries had entered into a consensus that any issue with respect to india and pakistan will be dealt bilaterally and there will be no outside forces and new unilateral decision will also be taken internally but what pakistan has done with the release of this political map is it has violated the shimla agreement of 1972 and at the same time the lahore Dec- declaration of 1999 what could be the implications ideally we all know for the fact that jammu and kashmir is an integral part of india but pakistan was also creating an illusion that jammu and kashmir can become an independent country and it was supporting the cause of the independent country of jammu and kashmir with this particular move all the illusion created by pakistan comes to an end why because pakistan has currently put the state or the union territory of jammu and kashmir into the fold of pakistan less setting aside every idea of an independent country of jammu and kashmir but point to be noted is jammu and kashmir is an integral part of india what has been the reaction of india to this move india has called this as an excise of political absurdity why because pakistan has claims of indian territories in the indian state of gujarat and on the union territories of jammu and kashmir as well as ladakh and at the same time the statement has also 
released by the Ministry of External Affairs where they said that these are ridiculous assertions having neither legal validity nor international credibility. This leads to another important discussion and that is about how Junagadh became a part of India. After the Indian independence movement, we had the princely states which were given three important options. One is you either join Pakistan or you join India or you can be independent as well. Most of the princely states did join India as well. But there were three princely states which were vacillating and they were in complete dilemma. Which are these princely states? One, it includes Jammu and Kashmir. Next, it includes Hyderabad. And third is Junagadh. We will not be discussing about Jammu and Kashmir as well as Hyderabad. But our focus will only be on Junagadh. Junagadh was in Katewa region which happens to be in the state of Gujarat. Junagadh and its vassal enclaves were ruled by the Muslim rulers and the Muslim ruler was Nawab Mahabatkan Rasul Khanji. When you look at the geographical location of Junagadh, it is completely away from Pakistan. It is not directly connected to Pakistan. There is no contiguous zone. And one of the important ports called as the Verawal is about 300 miles from Karachi. And 80% of the population was from the Hindu community and they wanted to stay with India. But the Raja or the King was from the Muslim community and he wanted to go back to Pakistan and annex this princely state with Pakistan. While all this was happening, the ruler in this particular region of Junagadh wanted to join Pakistan. But India wanted to have a referendum in this particular region. But this was not taken lightly by Pakistan as well as by the ruler. This is when India said that they'll have military actions as well as economic blockade. Immediately when this was told, the Muslim ruler from Junagadh immediately leaves to Pakistan. So after he leaves Pakistan, a referendum was conducted, a plebiscite was conducted and more than 90% of the people did wish and joined India as well. And as a result of that particular plebiscite, Junagadh becomes the part of India. Then Pakistan could not hold on to this issue. It also takes this issue to the United Nations as well. And after it was taken, the issue fizzles out. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article here is speaking about gas tragedy in LG polymers plant in Vishakapatnam. The same has been explained on 8th of May 2020. Under the first topic, Vizag Gasly claims 11 lives, over 350 hospitalized, which is a very important factor for your GS Paper 3 disaster management. An elaborate video of about 15 minutes has been explained. The link for the same will be provided in our description box, so kindly look into it. What are we going to discuss in this article? This article currently says that after the tragic death of many Many people due to gas leak in Vishakapatnam, initial reports suggested that maintenance failures, operating errors and improper storage of the toxic steering gas may have led to this tragedy. Preliminary investigations have also revealed that this particular plant was operating without any valid clearance for about two decades. And after this particular report came out in the general forum, the Andhra Pradesh government had also decided that this particular LG plant will have to be immediately shut. But now the central government has opposed this particular move. Why? Because it is waiting for number of reports from the violating committee. It is also looking for reports from the NJT. So only after consensus is built between NJT and violating committee, that is when the central government is planning to take up measures, whether it has to be shut or it has to continue its operations. One of the important sections that we have to know is section 5 of the Environmental Protection Act. What is this section 5? Let's say there is a company which has violated number of norms, rules and regulations set by the central government. In that particular case, in case there is clear violation of the environmental norms, the central government would be able to shut the operations of this industrial outfit. So in case there are any violations from the established norms, the central government would be able to take a direction where it will ask that particular outfit to immediately shut its operations. This is what we have to understand from this article. But for the entire analysis, kindly look into our 8th May 2020 analysis 
under the first topic. Now let's look into the next article. This article here is speaking about economically weaker sections quota challenge referred to the constitution bench. What is this economically weaker sections? What is this 103 constitutional amendment? What is the whole procedure for reservation has been explained in one of our videos by Sarmat sir. The link for the same will also be provided in the description box. Kindly look into this particular video to understand what is the reservation, what is the constituent assembly debates, what is the significance, what is the Indra Savani case judgment, what have been the past precedents of the Supreme Court and what has been the procedure followed by the government of India in the present scenario. This is what you have to understand in the present scenario since it is a constitutional interpretation according to article 143 clause 3 it says in case there is an interpretation of the constitution or there is a substantial question of law such will have to be decided by the constitutional bench and that will require about five judges so this has been referred to a five judge bench so once they have this particular judgment released we will have the discussion once again but for the past kindly look into the video whose link will be provided in the description box now let's look into some of the preliminary practice questions consider the following statements Pokali is a unique saline tolerant rice variety from the state of Tamil Nadu. Pokali has received a GI tag. Which of the above statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why? It is not from the state of Tamil Nadu, but instead it is from the state of Kerala. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference given under this article. Kindly remember, the Pokali variety of rice is salt water resistant and this has been now sent to West Bengal. Why? Because we recently had one of the cyclone and because there was cyclone there was large-scale saline water which had entered into the farming regions so because of that they are now trying whether this pokali rice can be grown in the saline regions of west bengal and also remember it also has the geographical indication as well now let's look into the next practice question with reference to the qualified institutional placement which of the following statements is or correct sebi introduced the qip process in 2006 to prevent listed companies in India from developing an excessive dependence on foreign capital. QIPs are less cumbersome than IPOs and FPOs. Which of them are correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference given under this article. Kindly remember, a qualified institutional placement is a capital raising tool wherein listed company can issue equity shares, fully and partially convertible dependents or any security other than warrants that is convertible to the the equity shares. Why did SEBI come up with such a notification? That is because when you consider the year 2006 and before to that, there were a lot of complications when it comes to the borrowing from the market. So as a result, majority of these companies were exploring outside markets from foreign countries where they were planning for borrowing as well. This included the global depository receipts to fulfill all their needs. In order to overcome this issue, in order to simplify the complications and remove all the ambiguous situations, that which was present in the Indian market, SEBI came up with this notification. Also remember, this particular QIP is only for those type of companies which are already listed in the stock market. Also remember, the QIPs are less cumbersome than IPOs and FPOs and that is because they don't have to file a pre-issued document with the capital market regulator. Now let's look into the next practice question. Diplopodology is the scientific study of, it is the study of millipedes. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference given under this article. Millipedes are also called as diplopods. Their study is called as diplopodology. They are invertebrates, animals with no backbone and they have an exoskeleton, a pair of antenna and a segmented body with various segments with two pairs of jointed legs per body segment. A lay person may think that this particular millipede and centipede are very similar but there are some differences. What are the difference between the millipedes and centipedes? It may help to know the difference as centipedes are mildly venomous. Being carnivorous, venom is injected to subdue their prey and their bite can be quite painful and cause mild swelling as well. While millipedes have two pairs of jointed legs per segment, centipedes have only one. So kindly remember these 
these key differences. One, centipedes are venomous and two, this particular centipede have just one leg per segment but they have two leg per segment. Also remember, millipedes are often referred to as detritivores. They feed on the decay organic matter like leaves and other dead plant thus contributing towards decomposition cycling nutrients back into the soil thus aiding in the well-being of the ecosystem. Their intriguing appearance has also inspired number of scientific research from being model organisms to study anthropods to robotics. This is what we have to understand with reference to this article. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements about Lebanon is incorrect? It is located on eastern shore of Mediterranean Sea. Lebanon shares international borders with Syria, Jordan and Israel. Which of them are incorrect? It is asking for the incorrect statement. So the answer is to why? Because Lebanon does not share its borders with Jordan. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference given under this article. Kindly remember it does not have any borders with Jordan but it only has borders with Syria as well as Israel. Another important question is kindly remember all those countries which are in and around the Mediterranean Sea. We have Lebanon, Israel and multiple other countries so kindly look into it. And also when it comes to the physical features we have to know that there is Bekaa Valley, there is Lebanon mountains and we have Litani river as well as Orentes river as well. So kindly remember these important in facts for your preliminary examination. Now let's look into the next practice question. Amnesty International is an agency of United Nations to help refugees of civil war, a global human rights movement, a non-governmental organization to help people, voluntary, very poor people, an intergovernmental agency to cater to medical emergencies in war ravaged regions. The answer to this is it is a global human rights movement. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference given under this article. Now let's look into the mains practice question. Does the 10% reservation to economically weaker sections violate the original intent of the constitution and the established principles as laid by the Supreme Court critically analyze? Nuclear deterrence theory is unreliable and invalid which encourages nuclear proliferation comment. So please write all your answers on the comment section. Peer review. Come up with constructive criticism. This is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.